Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen, I'm back with another set of random encounter ideas that don't suck. Today, the adventurers have completed yet another quest and have journeyed to a city or town for some downtime. Let's see what NPCs and events await them. The adventurers pass the gates of a large walled city. The streets are bustling with more townsfolk than usual, gathering in small groups to exchange hurried whispers. Looking up toward the royal castle, the group can easily tell that the house flags, which normally fly high above the castle, have been lowered to half-mast. The adventurers will need to investigate to determine the reason, unless they have a trustworthy informant within the city. It turns out that the prince has been injured in a recent battle. Of course, if your cities are not ruled by monarchs, you can adjust the title of the injured person as necessary. This is the type of encounter that can help shift the attention of your party off of their own characters and onto the bigger world stage, as it were. The group continues on through the city until they pass a baker who stands on the corner of an intersection offering free samples. It's a rather strange looking pastry but the baker will assure the party that they've been testing a new recipe that is almost ready. If the group members take one of the pastries, they may notice that the baker hasn't had much luck in handing out samples. The reason for this will immediately become apparent upon eating the item, as it tastes absolutely terrible to almost everyone in the party. If there happens to be a Goliath in the party, however, then they may actually find the pastry quite delightful. The flavoring for this particular dessert is a Goliath delicacy, the brains of river trout. It's unclear why the baker chose this flavor, but it'll be up to your party to express their thoughts on the dessert. The adventurers finally make their way to the local tavern for a moment of respite. They're served a fine meal in the comfortable barroom. Over the course of their lunch, the group will be able to people watch a bit, and one individual in the tavern may catch their eye after some time. A solitary half-orc sits at the bar for minutes at a time before approaching various folks of the opposite persuasion, and each time he seems to be rebuked. If the adventurers approach, then they will meet a lonely but friendly half-orc who is searching for the love of his life. The poor hopeless romantic hasn't had any luck with the local folk, and would be happy to receive advice from anyone willing to share it. While the adventurers are on the street, they will have an opportunity to notice a particular merchant who seems to be mistreating his servants. The adventurers happen upon the scene as the merchant berates a young servant for dropping a piece of luggage off of their wagon. The contents of the luggage are strewn about the street and the merchant uses a switch to punish the servant as they collect the merchant's belongings. It will be up to your adventurers to decide how to treat this less than savory merchant. Later on, the group makes their way to the marketplace of the city. The group's rogue suddenly feels a tap on their shoulder and turns to see a familiar face. An old acquaintance, who is also a thief, smiles back at the player character. It'll be up to you as the DM to find an NPC from your player's backstory who will be appropriate for this moment, but they might have grown up together, ran a few jobs together, or they could even be related. By happenstance, the acquaintance noticed the group's rogue from across the market and decided to say hi. They'll have a few stories to share about the city, other jobs, or the roguish outlook in the area. The adventurers continue their business until dusk, when one of the players receives a mysterious flyer from a passerby on the street. The brightly colored pamphlet has two big words written in capital letters across it. Tiger Wrestling. Inside, the pamphlet lists a time and place where any interested individuals may be able to view the games. If the group decides to investigate, then they will find an old building on the outskirts of the warehouse district. 
Those who run this game know that the town's guard wouldn't take too kindly to either the animal cruelty or the unlicensed exchange of coin that goes on here. So, the group will need to answer a few questions from the bruisers outside before they get to witness this game, which will be exactly as described. The next morning, the group is back on the streets of the city, when suddenly one of the townsfolk cries out and points to the roof of a nearby building. An old human man has inched to the edge of the roof, but it doesn't seem like he's planning on taking a fall. The man wears a huge pair of feathered wings, spanning at least ten feet, as well as some goggles and a helmet. As he takes his place, he exclaims, Behold, citizens, soldiers and esteemed guests, I have finally completed my next invention, the Wings of Man. He will then take a leap from the building, flapping furiously. He falls for a moment, but a gust of wind will suddenly catch under his wings and he'll glide gently to the street below. It seems like this inventor is onto something, though what he's accomplished is little more than falling with style. The adventurers continue their business in the city, stepping into various shops. Eventually, some of the group members may run into another individual who appears to be fleeing from something or someone. The individual will come to a quick halt when they spot the adventurers and rush up to them asking if they'd be willing to hold some equipment for them for payment at a later date. They'll assure the group that ample payment will be supplied but they simply must get the items off their hands right now. The group won't have long to decide, as the individual continues to glance over their shoulder every few moments. Whether the group decides to help them or not, the individual will hurry off. It'll be up to your players to decide how long to hold the items, before they realize that they will never see this NPC again. Whenever the adventurers enter or stay at a castle or manor within the city, they will have an opportunity to run into another interesting person. The noble of this house has a retinue of servants, gardeners, and even an executive chef, who is the subject of this encounter. The middle-aged human woman has been cooking for the family for her entire adult life. In fact, she was studying to take this job well before it was available as her lineage has all been chefs for this noble's family for many generations. Of course, both the noble and the chef will have a story that has been passed down about the origins of this arrangement, which will be up to you as the DM to create. Whatever the story, the adventurers will certainly be eating well tonight. Finally, as the group is on their way out of town, they notice the sign for a shop that they hadn't noticed before. It simply reads, Ancient Relics. If so inclined, the group is free to enter the small, dark, and dusty shop where an old individual wearing black robes sits almost motionless in one corner. The shopkeeper weakly greets the party as they enter, but makes no movement to stand up or explain any of the items in the shop. Sure enough, all of the items are very old, broken arrow shafts, rusted blades, and dusty tomes. The items even seem to have a slight magical aura to any casters of Detect Magic, though the aura won't give away any particular school of magic. Unfortunately for anyone who purchases an item from this shop, each of the items sport a minor curse. A lucky coin is actually an unlucky coin or a diary is actually an item that sends whatever words written in it to another entity. Make sure to have fun with these minor curses, but try not to harm the adventurers too badly. And that brings us to the end of today's City Encounters. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to smash that subscribe button. If you have ideas or requests for future videos, I'd love to read about them in the comments section below. I'd also love to hear about what environments your adventures are taking place in. Until next time, be well, be excellent to one another, and stay curious, adventurers.